maybe not even that, I don't know what they mean by it's a personal thing and you shouldn't really bring it into public life. But this idea of religion is so removed from what Islam teaches. The Quranic concept, and I believe the concept that all the prophets taught, the, 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 the concept of Jesus, of Moses, of Abraham, of all the monotheistic faiths, is that no, religion is your life. It's not just a part of your life, it is your life. It dictates what you believe is right and wrong, what you believe is good and evil, what you believe is appropriate and inappropriate. And you can't push the boundaries of that because that's God you're talking about. You're talking about God. You can push the boundaries of God. How arrogant is that for a human being a little human being, we are specks on a planet that is a speck in a universe that is a speck. As the, as the Prophet Muhammad described, the universe is like a ring in the desert before the throne of God. Imagine that, a ring in the desert. And we human beings, with our limited reason, we're going to say and think that we know better than God? No. This itself is a type of madness, we would think. So this is very important. The, Quran, the Muslim's life is rooted in the Qur'an. That's where we get our criterion by which we judge. And that's what we believe a truly moral, successful, harmonious society must be rooted in something like that. In something like that. It's essential for successful societies and indeed successful individuals. So this is the concept of submission. And if you think about it, we all submit to someone or something. All of us submit. Think about it. For example, ask the police officer, well, you're wearing a uniform. Why do you wear the uniform? Huh? So you can be identified. Do you like your uniform? Huh? The, I'm, I'm talking about the actual, put, let's put it this way. If you walked into Topshop, yeah, and you saw your uniform hanging up there, would you say, oh, that's what I'm going to wear this Saturday night? You know, it's like... Wouldn't be my choice. It, <laughs> who, wore, who wore a school uniform when they went to school? Hands up, who wore a school uniform? Did you enjoy wearing your school uniform? Do you like it? Huh? Most of you didn't, right? So, why did you wear it then, if you didn't like it? Why did you wear the school uniform? If you didn't like wearing the school uniform, why did you wear it? Huh? Because you had to. But I thought it was a free country. I thought it was a free country. No, we all do things all the time. There's things that we... And what, okay, so what is it when you do something that you don't want to do because you have to? What do you call that? What are you doing? You're... Huh? You, you're submitting, right? I give up what I want. I want to wear these nice clothes. I want to wear this, but I'm going to give up that because, well, that's the rule. Or maybe you do it. Let's think about another situation. Maybe you surrender and you give up because you love somebody. Yeah? I mean, in short, I hope, God willing, that, you know, the sisters here love their husbands, yeah? And the husbands here love their wives. I'm hoping that's the case, yeah? So it's normal, isn't it? It's normal. You love your children. You love your children, right? But it's not always you want to give up your day. Maybe you want to give up your weekend. <coughs> You, maybe you want to play football, maybe you want to go mountain biking like me, or maybe, I don't know, whatever it is you want to do. But you know what? You give up some of that time because you love your kids, and you want to do something for them, and you want to make them happy. That you, 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 sometimes you give up because you love someone. You surrender, you submit. You can submit out of love, and sometimes you submit out of fear, because I'm afraid what's going to happen to me if I don't do this or if I don't do that. And sometimes you do it because, wait a minute, I just know that's the right thing to do. Now if you think about it deeply, think about this, think about this deeply.
Can anyone think of any moment in your entire existence when you are not submitting to someone or to something? Think about it. Your entire existence where you are not submitting to someone or something. You, I, I mean, you can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever you say, you'll think that actually, yes, I am submitting to someone or something. When you're asleep, you're submitting for your need to sleep. That our existence is submission. So what is Islam saying? Think about this. Think about the concept. Or I'm not, I'm not telling you the details. I'm telling you the concept of Islam. If you want to understand Islam, it's the concept that's key. What Islam says is, look, actually, the being that is most worthy of our submission is God. If we submit to someone because we love them, well, God is more worthy of our love. Because whatever we have, ultimately, from goodness, comes from God, ultimately. So God is more worthy of our love. If we submit because we're afraid, well, we should be more afraid of God than anything else. Because He is more able to punish us than any other being. And if we submit because it makes sense, because it's intelligent, because it's wise, well, who is more wise than God? So therefore, the one that is most worthy of us submitting to is God. So here's the question. How do we submit to God? How do we know the best way to live our life? How can we know what God wants us to do? How can we love God? How can we express our love for God? How can we keep away from the things that God doesn't... That's where the Qur'an comes in. We believe that that's why God has sent books. For example, the Torah to Moses. And the Injil or the Gospel to Jesus. And the Quran to Muhammad. These are all, these, these are books or guidance from God to teach us how to live our life in a way that is pleasing to God. That is the essential importance of the Quran. That's what it's about. Now if you understand that, as, and as Abu Tayyib said, it's not the actual burning the Qur'an that's the problem. It's not the burning the Qur'an that's the problem. The issue is the insult that is intended. The point is, I want to insult your book. I mean, a Muslim would say, as we said, that's actually one of the ways we've been taught that if we want to dispose of old Qur'ans or torn Qur'ans or something, one of the ways we're allowed to dispose of it is by burning it. And it's not considered to be insulting the Qur'an. But the point is, it's the intent. But the issue here is, 